All right, everybody. Uh, it's a fun experience for me. I get to work with someone that's got actually a lot of background in manifesting and in Goddard for sure, which is what we're going to talk about today, but in a whole lot of other subjects. So there's probably going to be some future shows coming down the road. But Sarah Jewhurst, up uh, up in the UK, or at least up and relative to me. Uh, Sarah, welcome. It's really, really nice to chat with you. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you. Are you? I'm doing great. How is it over across the pond, as they say? It's been nice today. I've been out yeah. for the day. So, yeah, I've been out I with the too. kids. Yeah, you seem dressed in some nice summer wear. So, good for you. I actually see in sunshine in England. That I hear is rare, maybe. So, that's, yeah. that's wonderful. Wonderful. Good. Can be. So we wanted to talk about an aspect of Goddard uh, that he talks about. I believe the book that you uh, you mentioned in, uh, that it's in is Awakened Imagination and the Search. Um, the one that I'm familiar with is uh, the reader. I'm not trying to sell this because I obviously didn't write it, but it's this book here, right? So, uh, and for some reason that looked backwards to me. I don't know why, but whatever the case is, um, we've got a couple cool quotes in there. But it's talking about how creation is finished, uh, kind of. In a simple way, like what would you say? Like simplify. What is that? I mean, obviously it's three words, and we're talking about Goddard. So three words in Goddard speak is something like four thousand words in regular human speak. I don't know. It's something like that. How does that translate in your mind? What's a quick? What's the one minute version of creation is finished to you? And then we'll get into the quotes to kind of back it up. Okay, I guess I thought that creation was something that was only only happened up until now, and that anything in the future was was not created and was not known. Um, but then I suppose if you do have when you're born and we all have glimpses of our higher self, it makes sense that there is something that's already known. And it also makes sense for people like Nostradamus and people who um, predict things. They must get that information from somewhere, mustn't they? So I mean, I'll, I'll say because this is definitely one of the things I love speculating about. I had a manager one time that used to talk about how uh, that was useless speculation, Dan, and I, I loved doing it. But uh, in my mind, there is, and from what I understand from the things I've studied, is there's dimensions, right? And so when we create something in the mind, it actually creates it in a higher dimension. And in that higher dimension, it's a different energy, different frequency, and it's not as dense is kind of how it's been sort of explained, I guess. Uh, and, and really what we're trying to do is bring that density down into where we're at. So to the same concept, and Nostradamus, kind of getting it from more that higher level that higher self that more group consciousness that's my th that's yeah my, that's what I, well, I was talking to my friend about this the other day she was saying what exactly is the fourth, fourth dimension and i said i think my understanding is the third, the third dimension is like a snapshot in time isn't it the fourth dimension is say for example you can see the whole of a person's life all in one go that's kind of how i perceived it to well be. there's been a lot of discussion on it so there's different dimensions for sure time is a dimension uh, and there's potentially past future present but i i doubt it's that way i think time is a an odd weird component that we don't fully uh, conceptualize i've heard anyway that instead of it looking like linearly like many people look at it as it's really more like this like it's all already happened if you will and so yeah. there's just weird we as beings are experiencing through it as experiences i don't think time is quite right but we travel through it but yeah there's this weird component about uh, about how reality seems to play out and how time seems to play out but there's also apparently sorry i lost track there for a second there's also spatial dimensions so the fourth dimension spatially would be so you've got what length width and then you've got the the bottom part right you've got your your three dimensions your xyz as they would say in math um what it happens in in fourth dimension is you actually end up with another 90 degree off into a direction that we can't perceive Okay. And that spatial dimension is where there's a whole slew of separate weird things that start to happen. I mean, one odd thing, and I feel like we're on a crazy subject, but it's awesome anyway. <laughs> um, if a 4D object came into a 3D space, the way it would look at first as it entered, it would look like a pinprick as small as it, you know, the smallest part that entered. And it would grow into a sphere. However big this object is or however much of it comes into 3D or is shown in 3D, it would look like a sphere. You wouldn't see the 4D components of it. The extra dimension of it would be missing. It would be uh, hard to see, impossible to see. Yeah. And so therefore I think, you wouldn't I think it'd be more like a, a blur maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, blur for sure or spherical that has no form outside of that. And you would just be like, well, it's a, a sphere. What the hell is that? And it's floating around. Right. Like, ah, that looks yeah. weird. So yeah, 
I mean, we're kind of off on a little side salad for sure that I am infamous for. And uh, you like to do those too. So we got to be careful. But so one of the first quotes, I guess I was curious what you had for creation is finished. Cause really this is talking about how, when we think about things, and this is how we got off the side salad, how, when we think about it in my mind, anyway, it, it's coming in from that higher dimension. So we're making it up there. We're making it real. And that's why once it is seen, at least in my mind, that's kind of what Goddard's talking about. Once you're able to see it, you're now able to bring it into actual more dense third 3D reality from this higher place. Like it's real there. So now it's just an issue of bringing it down where we're at. Uh, and yeah. I, don't, I don't think that's a conscious effort per se is something that happens just through the process of letting go and knowing it's so and grateful and all the things that come with it. It's just realizing that's how it works. It's I've seen it. I've seen it with clarity. It's done. So that to me in a nutshell is what Goddard's saying with creation's finished done. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. really, I think, is kind of what's up. So let's talk about let's do let's grab the first quote and let's uh, Okay. Let's dive so in the first this. one is the world of creation is finished and its creation is within us. So I guess we must have seen it. It says we we saw it before we set forth and have basically been trying to get back to it ever since. Well, the world of creation is finished. I get back to it implies to me the sense of trying to get to a place that once was. And really, there's no way to do that, right? There's always, there's only forward, there's only tomorrow, there's never the past again. So obviously, we're trying to get to what is, <laughs> I guess technically, but the creation, you're right, it is, once it is seen, it's done. Isn't that basically what your quote's saying, right? I mean, yeah, I guess you could see it loads of different ways. It's almost like we, we saw it and then we're kind of on a quest to oh. to recoup it um, throughout life and we're constantly unlocking layers of it, I suppose, as we increase our consciousness. That's how I perceive it. Okay, let's explore that. Let's talk about the unlocking layers. I like that idea. I like that. So what does that mean to you? Like, let's give, a, if you can, an example maybe. Um, well, I think that... It doesn't have to be personal. I'm just trying to think over the last year... I've kind of understood things at a certain level and then felt that it wasn't a problem wasn't solved and ended up creeping onto the next level. And I find that when you move to another level of consciousness, you've got to completely um, switch beliefs. So all everything that you've understood and believed at this level of consciousness, you have to then discard to move on to the next one because it completely contradicts each other. Have I don't you know ever, if you find this. Have you ever reread a book after uh, after a number of years? Yes, and it's completely different, yes. isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I so I agree with the, the component you're talking about is I believe, and I, I see this kind of as, I guess when I talk about it, I talk about it from the standpoint of the filters that we wear. And as we yeah. expand ourselves, as we work on self-love, like whatever the thing is that we're currently working on, like for me, it's spiritual evolution. That's kind of the thing I'm constantly trying to expand. And, right, right. Like for some people, it's just maybe being nice to others. That's their focus right now or, or just trying to manifest a specific person in their life or trying to get a new job. Right. But it's, it's this constant expansion and evolution of ourselves and trying to increase, enhance, expand who we are. And thusly, I think from there, is how we attract larger things. I think it's like you bump up to a new level. And when you get to that new level, it's almost like literally flying higher. Like, oh my God, I can see more stuff. There's, wow, I didn't realize how much stuff is around. Like I'm seeing it everywhere. And it's like you get into this new energetics where your filter has been altered. And now all of a sudden, I'm seeing things I didn't see before. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I know the first time I read The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, I just remember reading it and feeling completely and utterly frustrated with it. Like, I know it's true, but I, I hate it. I, can't, I just have so much resistance to it. And then I read it a couple of years later and I could understand bits of it. And now I can read it and just pretty much get, you know, fairly good resonance with it. And it's just unbelievable. Even I even think that when you read a sentence, when you're in a bad mood, and when you read the same sentence in a good mood, it can have completely different meaning. Oh, you're 100% correct. And I mean, I talk <laughs> about that too, especially with like thought transmissions and stuff. I mean, that yeah. that feeling that you're at when you're vibrating, that is your filter too. Like it, it filters what you're attracting towards you. It filters what you see in front of you. It filters your experience. And it yeah. seems crazy to say it. Sure, I get that. It also seems simple, but it's not. Like, 
your vibration is all about your mood and how you're feeling and what you're thinking about and what you're how you're interacting. Like it's all of these these inner components about you, and that's what we're sharing with the world is is that that it's it's our energy. It's like I I am constantly imparting my energy on the world, whatever that energy happens to be at that moment. At least I, that's what I call it. I don't know. I don't know yeah. a better way to describe it, but yeah, I think it's hard. It's hard to picture it visually, isn't it? So even though we know that we are all energy, right? We kind of still see each other as people. But I mean, you know that in how much other people can pull you around just by being upset by them or really happy with them or whatever. We do have a definitely, definitely have a huge influence over each other. And that's what's cool is one of the things that's neat about energy and why we are talking about it right now for sure is that is that manifesting component when you're thinking about it, when you've got that imaginal exercise that Goddard frequently talks about where you're giving it all of its shape, you're trying to go around it dimensionally, like I'm trying to walk around this thing I'm manifesting, I'm trying to see it from perspectives, right? Like all these cool little tricks and tips that, that Goddard offers us. And then ultimately you've seen it with clarity. It's now yours. You're done. What that is, is that's energy. That's an energy that you've created. It's a thing that is attractive to you and this other thing that you're trying to make happen. A lot of people, specific people, obviously, that are on my channel. But, like, it's that inner energy. And it's a tra- and it's an attractive force to, like, a singularity, if you will. Like, a, you have a, like, like, you've created a black hole in some place in the space and time, right? And it's sucking both you and this individual towards it. It's attractive. Uh, and, and, and less of a dangerous kind of time dilation sort of way. But that being said, so yeah, I, I kind of, I kind of, uh, I, I think that's why so many people have a hard time understanding how just imagining stuff works, how it actually does anything. It's, I, you know, it's funny. I, I have it right here. It's oddly, it's this little thing. I keep it right here. It's Einstein quote. I don't know how easy or hard you can see it. And you won't be able to read it. It's ridiculous. But everything is energy and that's all there is to it. Match the frequencies of the reality you want, and you cannot help but to get that reality. It can be no other way. This is not philosophy. This is physics. Albert Einstein supposedly said Mm -hmm. that. It's energy. That's what's so amazing about what we're doing with law of attraction and why so many people say, well, you talk positive and everything. It's like, well, no, it's not quite like that, but kind of. I mean, you know, like... It's, it is nudged in that direction, believe me. And they're like, bah. yeah. So I, I just think it's funny how some people can poo poo something that they haven't played with a little bit, even. And, and I think a lot of times uh, when you do experience this, uh, when you focus on something and suddenly you're like experiencing things along that line, you're like, whoa, this is very, very interesting. So it's a fabulous uh, adventure that I think many of us go on. Uh, do you have any other fun quotes that you've got going on with Goddard? Um, it says every plot and drama all worked out and experienced as possibilities when not in them and overpowering realities when in them. Wait, say that one more time. Every plot and drama is already worked out and experienced as possibilities when not in them and overpowering realities when in them. Every plot and drama has been worked out and then the rest yeah. of it's awesome. But uh, so every plot and drama is worked out. I call that the middle ground. I recently did a video kind of on that too, I think, which is interesting, but it is, it's that a lot of us have stumbling blocks. This is my take on it. I will see what I'm curious what you think, but like my take is it's a lot of us have these stumbling blocks that we perceive between us and this thing that we're trying to create in our lives. It's maybe they're mad at us. Maybe, uh, maybe someone else is smarter than us. Maybe it's too far away geographically. Maybe uh, I, I'm not in the right class, not hanging out with the right people. Maybe my mom's trying to marry me off to some person I don't love, and I love so and so who his mom's marrying him off to someone else. I, you know, people's dramas seem to come in many, many different ways. But I feel like all the middle ground stuff that we put as blockers has been worked out. That's taken care of. I call it don't mess with the uh, middle ground or don't F with the middle ground, even for that matter, to be more graphic. Like, But don't. Don't screw with that part. Don't worry about it. Don't micromanage it because that's the part that most of us have the hardest time believing. That's the part that most of us are like, I don't know. I just can't see how they can ever forgive me. Like, yeah. like right? That's that part that's like in the back. It's like, mur, 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 mur. and you're like, shut up. Like, I know I can do this. And it, mm-hmm. that disbelief just comes from worrying about the middle ground. F it. Don't worry about it. That's not your problem. 
No, that's the magic. That's the bit the universe does that we never get to know. And I quite like that we never get to know because we'd just be bored if we didn't know. That's the exciting part to me because there's it shows up in the weirdest ways sometimes. You're like, I did not even think about it being that way. That's awesome. Like, wow, thank yeah. you. Perfect. That's what I wanted. I just didn't didn't think it would be that way. And it shows you the versatility that can be available to you. And I think that's one of the things that often, for me anyway, I use as, well, I've seen crazy stuff happen in, happen in my life. So anything's possible. And as I've said in other videos too, it's like your whole life can change tomorrow. It can change today, actually. Your whole life can change today. It could literally be one person you bump into has a conversation with you that sends you down the path, whatever it is, meeting somebody, job, car, money, whatever the thing is that you're trying to get, all it takes is probably a conversation with one person. And once that yeah. happens, sky's the limit. Yeah, that's it. Boom. <laughs> that's an awesome quote. So uh, you got more, you got to have more for us. Uh, no, I don't think so. Those were the main ones, really. The main quotes. Yeah. I've got, I mean, there's other, other things I want to say, but well, not, give, not give quotes us, per se. Well, well, let's bring something up. Talk to me. Talk to me. Okay. As Top Gun, they well, would say, talk to me, Goose. Talk to me. Okay. So quantum realities then. If everything is already uh, created. Okay. And there's lots of different, so... I could be talking to you or I could be talking to somebody else. Or there could, there's loads of different opportunities or options of where we could be. I find that quite interesting. I know I've read somewhere before or heard somewhere before that if, for example, you haven't got your key and your front door is locked, that you can imagine yourself, imagine the door open and then you can shift into a, another reality and it can actually be open. Now, is, is, this sounds like, and, I, and maybe it's my misunderstanding. I've tried to dig into it a little bit. And I love the topic, so I'm not, I'm not even uh, going anywhere other than agreeance with you. But transurfing, is that that reality transurfing thing to a degree or no? It could be. I don't know. I've not heard of it turned uh, that way. There's a guy, uh, I'll say his name. I, he's Aaron Doty, Dor Doty, I think it is. Yeah, yeah um, I know who he is. Yeah, he's pretty cool. I, I like him. He's got a couple things. He's, I don't know. He's kind of clickbaitish on his thumbnails but i like i love his stuff i've been been watching him and he's very, he's super popular so i hope everyone understands i'm saying nothing but good things about aaron but um but he's yeah he was talking about this thing as uh, trans surfing and i haven't been able to watch a lot of his videos but there is this component of altering the reality that you're in uh from kind of that they call it quantum level but i think it's dimensional to whatever it is but that multi that multi-dimensional aspect of ourselves and being able to impact our current reality with that um i think it's something fun to do i think i will say here here would be my one recommendation for anyone playing around with this stuff and especially to enhance your success with it anyways um and i was talking about this in a uh, video i think i just published this morning but when you or yesterday morning i guess when i finally play this um but when you oh we were talking i lost my train of thought help me here help me help you <laughs> Yeah, we, I, I did a video this morning where I was talking about – yeah, shoot. Do you want me to change the subject? Well, yeah. I've, I've got another, another offshoot of this one, which is doppelgangers. Now, I've been told in the past – you probably have as well. I think most people have – that have you got a twin? Have, have, I've seen you before somewhere in Scotland, and I'm absolutely sure it's you and things like that. And it makes you think, is there like a different version of me somewhere <laughs> I love these tech, these uh, these questions. Yes, doppelgangers for sure is something that I've heard about. I've I've even I've even been told that uh, people have bumped into my doppelganger. Usually, from what I've read about them, anyways, is they tend to be more of a um, uh, kind of the antithesis of you, almost the uh, your opposite. So, like a version that may look very very similar to you, but can be a very different being or person, like kind of meaner maybe if you're a nice person or vice versa. Uh, so I've heard that about doppelgangers as well, but. Uh, usually, typically, people use it in that sense of, I swear to God, you were just here a second ago, and, uh, and there you go. So Yeah, it's weird, because I know in the book, Neville says that he talks a little bit about, um, he was late, laid on his bed in New York, and he decided that he would imagine himself in his sister's house in uh, Barbados, and she actually saw him and contacted him. She saw him in her house. I've got, I've got a couple friends. One in particular that I can think of, um, maybe one other, uh, that, that I literally have had experiences similar to that where 
uh, you put enough vibrational energy towards them, thinking about them. I call it thought transmissions, you know, but thinking enough about them. And it's someone that I know that knows me well enough and is sensitive to me and, and cares about me. I think there's that you got to have a bit of a connection. I think it really, really helps. But when yeah. that happens, you literally can have uh, very profound experiences with them. And it differs um, person to person. The one thing I've noticed with uh, some of the spiritual traits in people is some people are more visual. Some people are more audible. And some people are more sensory, mm -hmm. feel it, don't see it, don't hear it, but feel it. Like, I don't know. I feel something. I feel something. It feels like there's a fire in front of me, like whatever, right? Like they feel something that doesn't seem to exist. Uh, all of us seem to have our, our extra sense that is uh, slightly more in tuned maybe than the other extra senses that we have. Because I, I believe all of our five senses have a extra sensory component to it. Yeah. So I think yeah. that kind of comes into play when we do that. But yeah, um, some people might see it when you're thinking about them, your thought transmission, they might actually see you. They might it's like, Oh my God, like see an energy. I mean, I saw my grandpa one time could make out where his eyes were like changed my life. It was right after he passed away. And it was like, Oh my God, he's, that's my grandpa. Like I'm sure that yeah. I see him. Uh, and so it's, it's powerful to have that, that, that moment too. But yeah, you might hear their voices. You might see their words. You might feel their energy around you. You might smell their perfume. Uh, just, yeah, all sorts of interesting ways. That... It's weird, isn't it? I mean, I'm quite vi visual. And the same thing happened to me with my granny after she died. I saw I saw her. We were in the house just tidying up. It was literally a day or two after she died. And I was only a kid. And I saw her um, stood there in a nighty carrying a kettle. And it was literally just a, f a flash. But it was it was very clear to me. Yeah. And I think this is another thing that I think is interesting about, about ghosts and things. Because I know it's controversial and some people believe in it and some don't and I think since I've learned about Neville I'm now thinking do ghosts exist if you believe they do and not if they don't well let's okay let's cover this real quick because we're running out of time here's the one component that I want to hear you tie together and I love it because uh, you've read a lot more Goddard than I have what is it about Goddard that's kind of got that made you connect to ghosts I'm curious I lived in a haunted place when I was younger so I'm I'm on board ghost wise uh, I'm just curious what the what the connection is um just the imagination thing that basically whatever you believe you can create i oh. suppose so like what maybe it's created uh, around us because of our thoughts about it or uh yeah. okay yeah no and there's a lot of well, truth to that there's... If, if they if they've died and they're not they're no longer in this in this world then we must be able to access them somewhere else or and that really gets us into that whole, that whole group thinking or that whole group consciousness. Because I, without a doubt, think that plays a part in what's accepted as real in where we're all at, like the part, the space and time that we all share. I think there's yeah. a, a reality factor that we all accept as a group is, is yeah. here's how it is. And trying to do things outside of that, at least in front of other people, is almost not allowed stretching it sure um but i think within our own confines it's amazing some of the crazy quote unquote crazy stuff that we can experience uh and then you can wonder you know was that real or was that not and and that's sure let's debate that i mean i had some weird neurons fire off inside my brain that made me experience a certain thing that was life-changing okay science says it's just a bunch of neurons firing off uh, the rest of me says I had an experience that was life changing. So I don't know, whatever. I, I don't care. Like if, if naysayers need a way to, to get out of it. Yeah. It was just neurons firing off. I'm probably crazy. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. You know, it's, it's not a big deal, but for the people that are looking to change their lives or wondering, um, what sorts of crazy things they might be experiencing and, and that's okay. Other people are too. Yeah. These are some of those things and, and explore them. They're fun. Yeah. I'll tell you a little bit. Cause I also, I also like, um, Carl Jung, you'll have heard of Carl Jung. I've heard of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he talks about personality types and he talks about people are either predominantly sensory, so they um, take in information via their five senses, or they're intuitive and take in a more sort of imaginative and intuition and read between the lines. So kind of look past sense data. So you and I are probably that kind of personality. So we're, our attention tends to go to, to the intangible information in the environment that other people can't see. And so for me, it's always been the why I, I want to understand why things happen the way they do. And I think that is, I think you have to get into the intangibles to really try to start to piece together all the things yeah. that are happening behind the scenes. And to me, to your point earlier, 
that's where the magic's at. That really is. And that's when you realize how much intelligence there seems to be in the life that's dancing around, around, you know, dancing around us. Like whether it's us interacting with others, it's us pushed out. It's completely us in a matrix. I, I don't know. There's a lot of interesting theories and all of them have pieces that I would jump on board and be like, yeah. Um, but at the same time, I, I don't know, but it is fascinating. And there is definitely truth to that component that there's, we're a part of something that's way more magical than I think we realize. And I think as we wake up to that, uh, it, it, the things that you start to experience in life change and, and enhance. And it's that filter we were talking about earlier. You, you, you change the filter, the lens that you've been looking at life, and suddenly everything's different. And it's really cool when it happens. Uh, Sarah, yeah. it's been really, really fun talking to you. I know we're, we're crunching up on a time, uh, time window here, but... Uh, everybody, it's been Sarah Jewhurst. We'll have her uh, link below. She's just recently started a YouTube channel, but someone that I thought had some really, really interesting topics and I thought it would be fun to talk about, and I enjoyed it. So I'm really glad that you uh, you, you uh, had some time to uh, to spend with me today, Sarah, and I appreciate uh, what we were talking about. Let's do this again. Let's. I've got another channel, too. Yeah. It's uh, On the Fringe with Dan Radio Style, uh, and I'll um, we'll definitely be doing some of these deeper, crazier things over there because that's totally awesome for that channel. And uh, for those of you that... Uh, have I'll put the link below. It's a channel I've I've only done like two videos. It's crazier stuff. Please don't judge me, but I just needed an outlet where I could kind of break away from some of the just manifesting things, and it's uh, it's a lot of fun. But Sarah, uh, thank you. Is there anything you want to talk about uh, that before we part? No, I'm good. I just want to say thank you for um, having me on. It's been fun. You're absolutely welcome. It was a lot of fun. We'll do it again for sure. Uh, and yeah, thank you. Uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll talk uh, we'll talk again soon. Thanks everyone. It's Dan Radio okay. Style and Sarah Jewhurst.